Mike Smith here. Let's have a look at a useful way of getting text from a Word document into a web page. Now generally um, in a, on a web page editor you'll have some kind of um, editor here that gives you a choice between a visual and a HTML view of your code. Okay, And we want um, this text from this Word document here to, uh, to end up on the web page so that we can make it look good. Now the main problem with Word is it has a lot of it. If you were to save this as a web page, um, Word tries to preserve the look and feel of the original document, but it's not actually very useful if you want to then paste it into a web page. So let me just demonstrate that. So what I can do here is I can save it as a web page and I've already done that and um, if you were to then open that web page in a uh, browser it would look like this. Now, as you can see okay it's trying to preserve the look of the original Word document but the problem is when you look at the the source behind this view page source, right? I've got that down here. Just bring that up. Look at all of this stuff that's saved along with the text. All of this stuff here. And this is all because the save as web page is trying to preserve. So here we are halfway down and we're only just getting to the text. And look at all this stuff here. If you were to take this and paste it into um, paste it into um, our web editor. Well, it would just it would just cause all sorts of problems. Okay, so we don't want to do that. And not only that, um, the styles that uh, have already been defined for this website are here in the websites. CSS definitions. So we don't want the document that has been pasted in to override these at all. We want these styles to apply. And in fact, if we need to, we can apply our own styles to make it fit the look and feel of the whole website. So how do we do this? Well, we need to clean this text up. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing it, and I'm going to show you how to use a Windows uh, text editing program and a Mac text editing program to do this. What we want is this text to be cleaned up to plain text, but we also want um, proper paragraph HTML tags and a CSS class applied to these uh, paragraphs so that then we can control the look and feel of that text. So let's do that. Let's grab, say, that much text and we'll just copy that. Now I'm going to bring up two text editors here. My favourite, which is Text Wrangler on the Mac. There. And um, Notepad++ on Windows. Now if you're wondering how I'm doing this, it's because I've got a program called Parallels, which allows me to run Windows programs on my Mac. Okay, so having pasted these into text editors, the Windows one on the left and the Mac one on the right, you can see that that has already cleaned up the text somewhat. And if I were to then um, take either one of these and copy that, then go to the editor, paste that in there, see that wouldn't be too bad. If I look at the HTML behind that, that's not too bad. There aren't any really weird um, HTML or CSS tags there, the text is quite clean. But the problem now is there's no way for us to style that. And you'll see, you'll see what I mean in a moment. There's no way for us to use our CSS to target those paragraphs. So we're not going to do that. We've got another step to go through before. So let's bring up those two text editors. Now, what we want to do is wrap these text uh, paragraphs in paragraph tags and then assign a class. Now in Text Wrangler, which is here on the right, you can 
do something really cool, which is prefix and suffix lines. So let me show you how that works. Okay, that brings up this little dialog box up here, insert. So this is going to insert this text, which I've predefined here, um, at the beginning of every line, and this suffix at the end of every line. And our lines relate to the original paragraphs. That's where the carriage returns were. Okay, so if I do that, press OK, there we have it. Now, if you're not used to seeing um, these tags, uh, basically what this allows us to do is target the text inside these two tags because we have uh, allocated a class to it. And if I show you the web page editor and the CSS editor here, you can see that these things these dot classes here allow us to target, for example, this formatting to that um, class. And, and the class that we are going to allocate is um, included text. We could call it whatever we like, but we want it to be distinct from all of the other classes um, that we've already defined in the document. Um, so you could, you could change that to whatever you like. And, um, and now, now I can do that copy and paste from here into my web editor. There, paste, right. And um, now we can, we can target that class. So I'll just copy that as well. And in my CSS edit, editor, I will create a new um, selector. Now this custom here is um, because I'm using the thesis um, WordPress theme framework here and uh, that's what that's about but uh, yep this should work so the idea here is then that I create a new um, definition and what we might do is just borrow Something from here. We'll, we'll give it a we'll give it a border around. No, we won't do that. We'll give it some text size here. Font family. Okay. Well, we'll do. We'll we'll give it. Uh, take that definition just to show you how this would work. All right. So I publish this post. And while that's saving, I shall also save my new style definition. And while that's saving, I'll go back here and I'll view this post in the new tab. There we go. Okay, and that's that text there now. Now I'm going to use a tool called Firebug to have a look at the classes that relate to this text here. Okay, so let's just have a look at that. All right, so here is the class. Classes included that text, and the class should be. Oh, oh it hasn't turned up there. Let me just see what I've done wrong. I think. Okay, so there shouldn't be a space there. Let's just save that and refresh and hopefully that will be all right. Nope. Okay, let's try that again. I like that paragraph and let's see what the CSS path actually should be. Back in our editor. I've got something wrong here in the selector. Okay. All 
Right, so take that out. Okay, I think we should be right now. Update that. Refresh this. Right, now you can see that that class has been um, applied. Yep, there we go. Okay, so now, and we can play with that now to our heart's content. We can make um, all sorts of changes to that. In fact, let's borrow some stuff from other definitions so that we can just play with the font size as well. So I'll just take all that stuff there, put that up. That down in there and um, that way we've got font size, font weight, line height and and even a float property if we want it to play with. So I'm saving the CSS file and I'm going to refresh this page. Right, that text is obviously way too big. And we'll get rid of the float as well. Get rid of the font weight. And this, make it smaller. There we go. And as you can see, we can play with this really, really easily. So we can um, make it a bit bigger. We can make it bold. We can play around with the line height if we want. All right, so that's normal. We can space it out a little bit. Line height and, oh, well, let's get adventurous. We could even do letter spacing. Um, start off with something small. Right, so because we've allocated a class which we are now targeting, we can um, we can play with that text. So we're no longer now tied to the original definition of um, the styling in the original Word document. Okay, so I'll just go back to our original here. Obviously not all of this styling actually makes sense, so I'll just remove the stuff that we don't want. We'll take away the font family, make the font size 1EM and I'll leave that there for now. The line height should also be 1EM and we'll take away the float but we might put a letter spacing in there as well and checking all the syntax Okay, so that gives us something to play with in Firebug. Let's just make sure we haven't made any mistakes. Refresh that page. Right. I think we wanted to take the bold away, didn't we? Okay, take that bold away. What I might, I might do is just make it normal. There we go. Press that page again. Great. Now, let's get even cleverer. Let's say that um, for any uh, text that we have pasted in from a Word document or from another source, let's wrap that up into something that we can maybe put a border around or a background image or something like that. Okay, so back in our Text Triangular document, what I'm going to do is put a div tag before and at the end. And this will effectively um, separate it from the rest of the text. Now we're going to give this a class as well. What will we call that? We'll call it included text wrapper.
So now we can um, apply styling to that as a block of text. Let's try that. So we go back to here, kind of HTML, and I'll just post all, paste all that stuff in there. A new class included text wrapper. Okay, and of course we'll need to define that in our custom editor as well. So what I might do is just borrow that. Now, we're not going to play with the font size there. We're going to do that at the paragraph level. But what we might do is play with the border. Here we go. Let's just steal a bit of that styling. We can play with it a bit later using Firebug and then come back here to finalize. So I'll just save that. So we've got um, the... Actually, that's probably not going to work. But that's okay. I'll just save... Have I saved this one? Update that. And refresh this page. I don't think I gave it the correct selector. But that's okay. Because I can use Firebug to help me there. There's our wrapper, there's our class, and what I'm going to do is just copy the CSS path there and go back to our file editor and just see what I've done wrong. Okay, yeah, it's going to be a div there. Okay, so just get rid of that, we don't need that, don't need that, and that there. Save that. Okay, so that should be correct now. Save that. Okay, and then refresh this. We should get a border around this text now. There we go. Brilliant. Now, uh, we'll probably need some padding here, so we'll do that. Let's just try it out first there. This is the, the border radius here, and the border itself one pixel solid, and that's the color. Okay, well, let's just try some padding. Oh, we'll give it four pixels. There we go. That's nice. Okay, so I have to put that in my CSS file, and I can actually copy it from here. Pop that back in my CSS file. Keep it all nice and neat and tidy. Okay, and that should be that. What I'm going to do is bring this page up in another browser just to see how it looks in Safari, for example. Okay. That text looks a bit odd because of the letter spacing, I think. So what I might do is just get rid of that. Yeah. And maybe the line height as well. Okay, yeah, that's what it was. So put the line height, take the line height out. Oh, I quite like that. All right, so um, the letter spacing point one, line height, get rid of. Letter spacing... Point 0.1 line height, get rid of. Okay, there we go. Now while I'm playing with Firebug here in this browser, it really only affects this browser's view. So if I refresh this now, then all of these have been reset to the actual values from the page. And if I copy, copy that link up there, go to another browser, and okay. That'll bring up that file, and we don't have a border, why not? Let's refresh that just in case there's a cached copy of it. Ah, there we go. Okay, so, um, yep, that looks pretty good. 
Okay, so, so that is how you copy text from Word and you paste it into a blog post right, using the um, inbuilt editor. But what we're going to do is actually take some control by inserting our own classes and our own paragraph tags and even a div wrapper around it which has its own class which we can then control. Now I ask you, now I, I hear you ask, how would I do that in a Windows text editor? Do you remember when I had um, Text Wrangler up here, I had um, prefix suffix lines. Okay, and that's pretty cool. How do we do that in the Windows text editor? Well, in Notepad++, which is free, it's a little tricky because there isn't anything really that allows you to do the equivalent of prefixes and suffixes. But you can do it by um, using the replace command and what's called a regular expression. Now, that is the regular expression there. Okay, just highlighted there. What that does is it finds um, basically each paragraph and this bit of text here, the, the slash one just in the middle there, um, represents the paragraph. And what is before it is text that we want as a prefix, and what is after it is text that we want as a suffix. So it's going to do the same text as our um, prefixes and suffixes over here. That text is before, that text is after, and this does the same thing. Now, where did I get that from? Well, I found it, let's see, on this blog. And that was very lucky because um, Mr. Praveen only posted it just over a month ago. So that was very fortunate because I wouldn't have been able to do that without this very useful advice. Okay, back to our blog post and back to our two text editors. Right, so the idea is to uh, put this text before and after, and we'll do that here. So we'll just do, now we have to have regular expression here, not just a normal search mode, regular expression, and that is a regular expression. And then we replace all for occurrences, that is that. And there we have basically the same on this side as that side. And now all you need to do here is put the uh, the div at the the div tag at the, at the front just like we did over here div tag at the front and at the end. And that's all there is to it.